hello. This is the real last uh, Crossroads tutorial video, because in this video, we're going to cover all the secrets and Easter eggs. All of them. Uh, this video, pretty spoilery. Crossroads has a lot of Easter eggs and secrets, and pretty much all of them are hinted at in the book. So if I go into a section in the book, like the welcome, this whole scenario is laid out in this entry where we're basically told that certain entries are going to have some gibberish at the end, which are going to give us hints. Hints for extra features, and to make, and that we're going to get hints at the recipes. If you want to try and work these, and they're often given, and this gibberish is usually given in hints and riddle form, in the form of hints and riddles, which you have to work out yourself. Now, if you would rather, uh, now I am going to tell you none of the recipes. I'm not going to tell you any of them. You, if you want to work out the recipes, you have to go and find the, find the entry in the book and try and work out the hints yourself. The only, the only one we're going to show of the recipes is the one from Magenta Bread, just as to demonstrate how this all works. Other than that, no spoilers. Uh, you might want to skip this video if you want to try and work out all the secrets yourself and don't even want to know how to use these things or what, what these things are, in which case, stop watching. If you want to, don't want all the secrets spoiled, find them yourself. But if not, if you're still here, I'm going to assume that you know what's coming, that, or that it's your own fault. So the first thing we're going to need is a Rod of Madness, which we are explicitly told how to craft at the end of this very first welcome message in the book by our friend Bobo here, who gives us hints on how to make things. It tells us about the secrets. Right? Now the Rod of Madness is how we craft stuff, and it's the how we craft these things. And you can craft the Rod of Madness itself pretty normally. Pretty normal recipe, you can just get told it. And the way any Bobo recipe is what ha is works is there's a Bobo item which Bobo hints at in the book. And to work out the recipe, he's gonna and to tell us the recipe, he's gonna give us a hint as to the three ingredients. Now, I am going to be honest, I don't remember where Ah, here it is. Now, here, Bobo's giving us our first hint on one of the items, and this is the only recipe I'm going to spoil. He says we need to, to go, that there's an item that's going to let us go fast, and to make it, we're going to need glow dust, fresh baked bread, and allium juice. All right. Well, it's not a very hard riddle. It's meant to be the first one you encounter, so it's really very easy. It's pretty obviously glowstone dust, bread, and magenta dye, which is the stuff you get from turning an allium flower into dye. It's not meant to be a hard riddle, because it's the first one. So you throw the three items on the ground, and all the bobo recipes require a poisonous potato, all of them, and we are told that the very first entry, the very first thing where you've shown the rod of madness, and you right-click with the rod, and it crafts. If you get it wrong, let's say three, I, I throw three random items with the rod, and use the rod with, and with the potato, nothing happens. Now, dispensers can use the rod, so you can automate this if you want. Now, this is the first Bobo item, and I'm going to get some milk ready. <laughs> All of the items have some pretty wacky and uncharacteristic characteristic effects. Some of them are more useful than others. This one gives you nausea, speed, and jump boost, and it gives you it in quite a strong way. You have to be careful with this because you will just jump off a cliff and die. <laughs> is what usually happens. Like jump boost gives you some protection from fall damage, but most of the times when you land, it'll hurt. But you can use this to get very, very far, far, very, very fast. Um, okay, that's enough of that. All right, there's a lot of Bobo features. Let's run through them, and I'm not going to tell you how to make any of them. Fluid void. Very, very simple. It does basically what you'd expect. It just deletes fluids. You just pipe fluid into it, and it just deletes it. Is that useful? I don't know. Good good question. Like I said, some are more useful than others. So if I just put, put some water in here, we will very shortly not have any water. <laughs> it's all gone now. It's voided. Okay, 
so next thing up is I'm literally just finding them this way because I can't just go to a section in the book and see them all in a nice neat list. <clears throat> Hamster wheel. Let me just put a bunch of these in my hotbar at once to save time. So hamster wheel is one of them. Uh, another one is Maxwell's demon. The other ones we're going to show off. Most of them are items and not blocks, but there are a few blocks. Uh, <clears throat> vacuum cleaner, of course. Rain idol. Rod of discord. Uh, the armor set. And the Lichtensteinian Navy Wrench. Oops, didn't mean to put these on. I was like, the Navy Wrench. Uh, nitroglycerin. Uh, poisonous Vodka. And Dirt Heat Cables. Now, trusting my memory, I'm almost certainly forgetting something, but I don't know what it is, so we're going to assume it's... Oh, yeah. One last thing. Okay. So let's run through these. Rod of Discord. This is literally just ripped from Terraria. Right-click with it, and it gives you... It's a blink. <clears throat> it goes through walls and everything. Every time you use it, it gives you the glowing penalty. If I were in survival mode, and if you use it while you have glowing... It will hurt you, so no debuff, it's fine. Use it while I have glowing, and it hurts. But just oh, yeah, uh, that I just exploded because I had that in my inventory. We're going to get to that. <laughs> the rain idol. This is a thing that can be... Don't worry, every Bobo item can be disabled in the config, so server owners don't be worried, but this is a thing that lets you do weather control. So... And I don't know if it works while uh, weather's off. So I'm in a desert. How would you even know? <laughs> Hold on. Let me get out of a, out of the desert and into a different biome. Thank goodness for all these terraforming craters from earlier. This thing can do two different things. It can create rain and it can remove rain. If I hold it and spam shift, it starts raining and breaks the idle. And if I hold it and spam jump, it breaks it and stops raining. The nitroglycerin. It is basically a grenade. Uh, you throw it, it explodes where it lands. So Spencer's been using anything else like that. Uh, with a catch, uh, the tooltip says handle with care, and there's a reason for that. If you fall, if you take, hold, hold on, is keep inventory on because I really want it to be. If you take any sort of damage, even like one point of damage, while this thing is in your inventory, it'll explode. Handle with care, as it says. Don't want to don't want to knock it about, so be careful with that. Poison vodka. Drink it, and it basically just kills you. These effects would kill someone in survival quite quickly. However, this stuff is a terrific fuel. You can burn it. <laughs> if I just put one as a fuel, this is going to last a ridiculous amount of time. I forget the details, but I believe it's on the order of hours. Uh, so that's a thing, like real life hours. And you can use it as fuel in a firebox or something else like it. The vacuum cleaner. Actually, it's called the vacuum hopper, but when you get it, you get the vacuum cleaner out of it. I'm not going to explain. Got to leave some secrets. And it's basically just you throw some items down, and if you hold right-click with the vacuum cleaner, it sucks them in. Sort of like a magnet where you have to uh, right-click with it. And it also works on entities. So, like, so it's a way, if you want, of transporting mobs. 
you know, an alternative to leads, especially since it works on hostels. Now, I don't remember if this is still a thing. Let me just check. No, this is not a thing anymore. Okay. So that's the vacuum cleaner. Pretty simple one. Dirt insulated heat cables. Uh, well, I don't know if, if you're familiar with the l concept of a lucky block, but that's sort of what these things are. They're a heat cable that at first looks absolutely terrible. <laughs> I mean, it's got a huge loss and it melts at only 42 degrees C. That's just dreadful. Uh, except when it melts, some interesting stuff happens. Like a lucky block, there's a lot of different things that can happen, and they're selected at random. Some of them are pretty useless. Some of them summon squids. Some of them make dirt. Uh, some of them make a wet sponge, which could be valuable. Some of them make a villager. So, you know, it's like a lucky block with only a few different things, uh, and it's of questionable usefulness, but it can be used as a source of villagers to start, let's say, a, a villager a village. Now... The Hamster Will and Maxwell's Demon, I'm going to do together. These are probably the most useful Bobo items. Uh, certainly they're the only ones I've seen. They're ones I've seen people try and mass produce quite a lot, which is a, th a, thing, a thing to do because they're not so simple to make. But no, I'm not going to spoil the recipes. And that's because these are kind of cheaty. <laughs> Some people just consider them cheating and disable them altogether. Um, they're both an infinite free power source. Hamster wheels are a free rotary power source. You just do that and it makes power. Not a lot of power, it's only five joules per tick, that's a pittance, but it's, you know, a reliable source of free power and you don't really have to work for it. The, if you try to chain these together, you have to make sure that, because, you know, gear direction is a thing, they're gonna be fighting each other if you do this, so you have to make sure they're not fighting each other, but anyway. Maxwell's demon is again, a free power source. This is a free heat and, and cold source. So if I just get this, it, it, the top of it will heat for free and the bottom will cool for free. And it can get very hot and very cold, and it's but it's pretty slow. It is, however, to be clear, it runs for free. <laughs> There's four different pieces of armor, a helmet, boots, chest plate, and legs. Each of them gives you, each of them provides no armor value and has no durability, but it does something useful. So the helmet makes you completely immune to drowning. I mean, I'm in creative mode, so there's not much point, but it makes you immune to drowning. The boots make you immune to fall damage. Uh, the leggings make you immune to debuffs. So, for example, poison, nausea, hunger, all the rest, they just, it makes you immune to them. But buffs still work fine. And the chest plate makes you immune to fire and lava damage, uh, but, and it works to distract piglins. So just like piglins will leave you alone if you're wearing gold, they'll be happy if you're wearing a piglin chest plate. The thing is, though, it's not perfect fireproofness. It, like, you take one point of fire damage before it triggers, and that's intentional. It's not meant to be perfect. The Void Crystal itself is not the Bobo item. Uh, the Bobo item is not exactly an item at all. The Void Crystals are a totally normal ore. Uh, what it is, is there is another lens for the modular goggles. In addition to the normal ones of Ruby, Emerald, Quartz, and Diamond, you can also add a Void Crystal. And this is sort of a secret extra one that you only find out about from the Bobo hint. If I add a Void Crystal, and enable this in my controls, all right? Now if I turn this on by pressing V, I've got X-Ray. I can see any every entity in the world has a glowing effect as far as I'm concerned. This is client side only. Uh, not everyone's going to see this glowing. So basically, I can see things through walls. I can see, oh, there's a pig over there. There's that villager from earlier over there. There's a bunch of pigs over there. Pig over there. Pigs down there. I used pigs as test subjects more than I realized. Pig over there. I'd be able to see items through walls. 
I can see my item frames over there, and just so on and so forth. Uh, so this can be very much quite power, quite useful. I'm not going to say powerful, but it's useful. Let me turn that off. I, I could even, when it was on, I could even see stuff from over there, like I could see an item frame over there. But let's turn that off again. <laughs> Uh, those are all the secrets and Bobo items, I believe. Have I missed one? I feel like I'm missing one, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> no, I think that is literally all of them. I could check. <laughs> I do have access to the code. <laughs> could, like, check if there's one I'm forgetting. Let me just do that real quick, because otherwise I'll feel like an idiot. I forgot one. <laughs> the Lichtenstinian Navy Wrench. Aka the poor man's multi-tool, aka a clear knockoff of a, of a Swiss Army knife, is a multi-tool. Not only does it work as a wrench, so if I had something wrenchable, uh, works as a wrench. It also works as a sort of generic digging tool. I can use it as a pickaxe. I can use it as a shovel. I could use it as a hack, as an axe. And if I had like. Uh, one of those blocks that uses a hoe to break, like those mushroom blocks, like the, the nether mushroom blocks, it would work as a hoe. You can't use it to till soil, it's for breaking things. Mind you, it's not a very good tool. Uh, it's, it's stone tier, so not great. But it is an infinite shovel and axe and wrench and whatnot, all in one, all in one slot. And no, you can't enchant it. All right. That would be all of the secrets and easter eggs, or at least all the ones you're allowed to know about. Hope you enjoy the mod. Goodbye.